We're talking TNA, WWE, AEW, so much coming up in today's video. Don't forget, we're giving away this championship belt at 100,000 subscribers, so go ahead and click subscribe today. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Yango Show. I want to kick things off with Jim Ross. He revealed on his podcast that he's going to be taking some time away from AEW because uh, he's got to heal up his leg. He's been very public and very open about everything going on with his health. He says his doctor believes he should take a few weeks off. He's not sure how many. Uh, he also went on his podcast later on in the episode, and he actually said that his contract only has a few months left and that Tony Khan has indicated to him that he would like Jim Ross to re-sign with the company. Good. Jim Ross is needed there. Hopefully Jim Ross, obviously longtime veteran of the business, hopefully one, he's healthy. Right? Health before well. Two, hopefully he's there. Whether he's commentator or not doesn't really matter. They have great commentators. I don't think that's an issue. I don't think that's a concern. But I think he needs to be there. Have him help them get on track. Tony Khan needs somebody there to help him. Jim Ross can be that guy. Simple as that. I want to turn our attention to the TNA video game. Yeah, TNA video game. Scott Demore was on the Real Wrestling uh, YouTube channel. He did an interview, and uh, he spoke about the video game. Long story short, they're interested. They want to do it. It's probably not going to happen in 2024. Scott Demore is pretty open about the idea of getting back into the action figure and video game space. Obviously makes a lot of sense. We know that TNA is coming back. We know it's like a new era for the company. We know they got some massive plans for the company. We know there's a lot of things that they want to do for the company, but he's pretty direct in the sense that in 2024, it's not going to be happening. He says it's something that's on their radar and they think it would be a good business decision. And then he also joked about how often he used to play wrestling video games back in the day. If you're a wrestling gamer, you know that right now it would be pretty damn awesome to have a TNA video game. And I'm not saying TNA needs to have like this massive developer, right? We don't need massive publishers and developers. There's great indie companies out there making great games. But the more options, the better. UPW, Wrestling Code, Fight Forever, WWE. Throw TNA into the mix. You're going to have a variety of wrestling video games to choose from, which is fantastic. More options is a great thing. I would also like to go as far as saying that with TNA launching a video game, let's say it's something that happens in 2025, 2026. That's a long time to wait. But if TNA allows their wrestlers to become DLC in other video games, that could be a massive win as well, which we're actually kind of starting to see it. Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin are DLC for UPW's Ultra Pro Wrestling video game, which is basically like a remix to WWF No Mercy. And I'm excited for that video game. And it's pretty astonishing how they have a pretty sweet DLC roster that's been announced. A lot of big names in the indie scene, a lot of legends. It's pretty cool. So maybe TNA, what they could do is work with UPW and bring some of their wrestlers as a DLC pack. Both companies could get a percentage of the sale. Would be really cool. It'd be really unique. It would definitely help game sales. And again, for wrestling fans, if you want more games, it's just another option that you get to have which would obviously be pretty significant. I love the fact that Scott Demore is very transparent. He is not lying to people. He's not telling people, yeah, we're going to do a video game. Yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then obviously lie because that's not really in the plans. That's why TNA continues to impress me. They make the right business decisions. They give the right expectations to their fans. And that right there is truly important. And that brings us to our final topic. Uh, sorry, I lied. Not a final topic. We got two more. They kind of go hand in hand. SmackDown. Some major changes happening to SmackDown. Dave Meltzer noted on the Wrestling Observer Radio that SmackDown will, in fact, air West Coast Live. They will air in the West Coast Live for the very first time. The day that the show airs is still unknown. We don't know if SmackDown is going to be moving nights, but we do know that SmackDown will be on the air live in the West Coast. So Dave Meltzer said one of the things that they did get, which is also going to be interesting, is that SmackDown will be live on the West Coast for the first time. 
I don't think it's ever been live on the West Coast. So it's going to be airing from 5 to 7 on the West Coast, whether it's Friday night or another night seems remains to be seen. So for the West Coast viewers who don't want to be spoiled, you have the chance to watch it live like the rest of the others. Fantastic. I'm going to assume that helps with television ratings as well. I'm going to assume that. I could be wrong, but having that live feed in the West Coast obviously would help ratings. Because if I remember correctly, that was also a situation with AEW. At one point, they were able to do live for the West Coast, and then that kind of like changed things. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But it's something, obviously, I'm bringing up because it's a very interesting situation for WWE in the event that they're moving back to USA Network. Why isn't that the same case that applies to Raw in today's day and age? As far as SmackDown movie nights, that's going to be really intriguing to me. I think they should move nights. 1,000%. I think they should move nights. I would rather see them on Tuesday. I've said this before. Monday, Raw, Tuesday, SmackDown, Wednesday, NXT, Thursday, TNA, and then my rest of the week, I could do whatever the hell I want. That's what I would prefer. That's what I would like to see. That's what I'm hoping for. Now, we spoke about SmackDown. We got to talk about Raw. Dave Meltzer had noted that WWE moving Raw to FX in 2024 seems to be a very good chance. He says there's a good chance that USA Network is losing WWE Raw. Most of the talk right now is that WWE is currently going to FX. This aligns with what we have been saying for months. Multiple different sources have talked about FX possibly being the TV network to secure WWE. Now, we didn't know if it was Raw and NXT, just Raw. We didn't know if SmackDown was going to be the case. Now, we found out SmackDown is going to USA Network. Raw going to FX is fine. I made a video on more Ango talking about why I don't want to see Raw on a streaming platform. If you guys didn't watch it, I'll put the link down below or somewhere up here. You should watch it. I'd rather see Raw on traditional cable or broadcast television. I don't want to see it on a streaming app. Disney getting the FX Raw rights, it's fine, right? Disney owns FX. Uh, you put FX and Raw together. I mean, you could keep it PG if you want, but FX doesn't need to keep it PG if they don't want. I would totally be okay with Raw being the more mature show, SmackDown being more of the, the kid-friendly stuff. I mean, you could do a variety of stuff here, um, but WWE clearly getting the bag, selling the TV rights for all three shows separately. I mean, it's a pretty big deal for them. WWE Raw, uh, don't, don't forget this, guys. WWE Raw, SmackDown, and NXT, they're all expected to shake up the presentation once the new TV deals kick in. That might mean new logos, new ring aprons, new everything, new graphics, new banners. That's going to kind of be like their reset, possibly even new stages. So I'm excited about all the things that are yet to come. I want to know what you guys think down below. Don't forget, I'm giving away this championship belt at 100,000 subscribers.